takes just a drive around Georgetown to realize that significant progress has been made in the restoration of the city. On this episode of Government in Action, we explore the initiatives undertaken by the relevant authorities and immediate projects for the future. As our 50th independence draws nearer, the capital city of Georgetown is geared for a fresh start with infrastructural and other improvements that both Guyanese and visitors will be proud to see. Additionally, there has been a clear shift in attitudes over the past year as Guyanese developed an increased sense of national pride. This change in attitudes led to the increase in their sense of personal responsibility for the cleanliness of their surroundings. This is in keeping with President David Granger's vision for a cleaner Georgetown. Just after his swearing-in last year, President Granger started a cleanup process in preparation for the rainy season. This cleanup gave way to a movement undertaken by several citizens across Georgetown. The President's hope is that Georgetown will reach to such a standard that it will be considered the cleanest city in the Caribbean. Today, following massive reconstruction works, even with heavy rainfall, reduced instances of flooding have been observed in areas which would have one year ago been quickly inundated with water. Added to a list of several streets which have been recapped and other infrastructural additions, there is an apparent change that has quickly taken over our city in an aim to restore it. Much of the kudos in this regard belong to the Honourable Minister of Public Infrastructure, David Patterson, whose professional qualifications are deeply rooted in the field of engineering. His background has undoubtedly contributed to the efficient assessment of infrastructural priorities in and out of Georgetown and the strategic execution of these projects. What became extremely apparent is that there was a, a disjointed approach to um, drainage uh, and irrigation in the country whereby um, everyone was doing their part, but they were all doing it in, a, in, a, um, in their own manner. Um, so what I simply sought to do since last year was try to bring everyone together on the same umbrella um, to have a consorted approach. Um, and, that's, and from there, uh, we developed a plan which would um, clean the main outfalls, um, clear the internal drainage, um, do some work to um, the, the sources were needed to be silted, so we did some work to them, bring back pumps into operations. Um, we had we did some humanitarian stuff, the pump attendants were, um, the huts that they were in, were in, in, in deplorable conditions, which means they, they weren't staying in the, in, in, um, on location, they were actually going home and then um, returning. So there, there are minor things like that, but all in all, I mean, what we just try to be targeted uh, as possible. On the Ministry's list of immediate projects also include works outside of Georgetown such as road rehabilitation and the installment of lights in areas such as Mucca and Diamond and works on the roads and bridges along the east coast and east banks of Damarara. But despite the improvements that his ministry has brought, Minister Patterson attests that his greatest achievement thus far lies in the human resources aspect of his ministry. He admitted that by giving his staff due respect and trusting them with responsibilities and creating an environment where they can make meaningful contributions to the work, this has resulted in an improved work process and created the ability for projects to run smoothly and effectively. We sat down and said, well, fair enough, Based, these are the constraints which, and we address them. We have whole regular meetings with our staff to ensure that these are the projects, we have to implement them, open door policy. Um, because I, I mean, I, I mean, as a minister, I don't know everything. I mean, um, I don't think anybody in the world knows anything. So we come up with ideas, and then we speak together. How can we implement them? The second, the the, the, the staff and so realize that not every decision um, has to be a political decision. Um, that you are responsible. You know, what I mean, um, they they are free to make decisions. We give general policy oversight. This is what we want done. This is the, um, the policy, this is what, what we want to achieve. Come, tell us how you can do it. And they come back and they say, and say fair enough, go ahead. And they're held responsible, but they're given the free reign to continue, they're held responsible. Um, it's, it has allowed them to, um, to, to be more productive. Another of the secret weapons of the ministry is the recently renamed Force Account Unit, a specialized group of engineers equipped with the skill set for the execution of emergency projects in the place of tendering external contracts. We immediately realized that this, this was a, a team of very good young men and women and, um, and they can do a lot. And the Force, um, and we held a meeting with them, and, and, and this is what an example of the giving people respect. And the guys said, these are the laborers, and the guys said the first thing is they objected to the name force account. It made them seem as though they were um, inmates and prisoners, you know what I mean, force account. Um, 
and um, the, and that they can do far much more than just pot uh, patch potholes and those things like that. Mm -hmm. So we immediately renamed the unit. It's now called our Special Projects Unit. We met with them and we decided, well, what are they? What do you need to 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 be more efficient? And they gave us a, a list of equipment, which include trucks, dump trucks, um, safety gear. I mean, um, several things, and we. 2016 budget, I got uh, 2015 budget. We got it to them, and they said, "Well, here, fair enough. You've done this. Go produce." Head of this special project unit, Mr. Lawrence Mentis, stated that the unit holds much pride in its work and has proudly undertaken the immediate tasks set out on the ministry's agenda. High priority areas of rehabilitation have included high traffic areas as well as those affecting youth and the elderly. Well, the minister normally gave his vision and his direction where where every work, um, how it needs to be done. And when it comes to the, the, the getting it down part, well, the engineers normally make the vision a reality. So now we're basically in charge of the design supervision, and my unit also do also the implementation part of, the, of that aspect. So the, the freedom is, is when you, you actually practice more of the engineering. You see, the minutes have a, biz, a, big, a big vision, and rightly so. Our job is to take that vision and make it a reality. My excitement is normally come when the people are pleased. You see, when people could see you every day and say, man, they're pleased with this and they're pleased with that, you know what I mean? It, 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 it actually gives you more energy to, you know what I mean, to continue working. So whenever, for example, Wolford Avenue, when we recently completed that road, um, I mean, the vendors, the teachers came out and say, man, they're happy. The children could I mean, walk on a better surface road and you know what I mean? And it's more it's more safer now. So whenever you see the the end users huh, actually come out and give their you know what I mean, they're saying that they are well pleased, that that is an encouragement and a driving force that actually give you energy to work even harder. Mr. Mentis explained that soon after independence, the unit will move quickly towards a very busy agenda, which will be rolled out in all ten regions. One of the notable projects that have been undertaken by the Special Project Unit is the Durban Park. Responsibility for the construction of the venue only days ago transferred to the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, during which time the progress has been significantly accelerated. Even with the Durban Park moments away from completion, the venue has fallen subject of critique regarding its funding and its necessity in addition to the already established National Stadium. Minister Patterson said, however, that the construction of the park will provide not only an improvement to the surroundings, but a means of recreation for citizens, among other benefits. Persons speaking seem to forget that the 50th Jubilee is not a question of the AP and UAFC government. It's not a, it's not a matter for the um, Ministry of Public Infrastructure. It's a national. It's a national. We're all 50 years old. Um, so that's the basis on which I, I, I took the, the project and I know that a lot of people locally and overseas who will come into Guyana to celebrate this milestone. Irrespective of whoever is in government, this is our 50th Jubilee. So I took over the project with that in, in mind. I thought that, that people are coming to celebrate to, um, a, a milestone in the country of, of, of our country. And you have to ask, well, what, how do you value your environment I mean because it, it was a jungle and the jungle had to be cleared and now if you clear the jungle you have to do something with it there, this is what what's being done now is just phase one um, the, the, the intent of the project <coughs> when finally completed is open space open to the public um, there will be fair, several um, recreational um, areas in it so you can I mean uh, one of the things which I am pleased of, I mean, from Lodge, there'll be an area for us to do exercising and those things, so you don't actually have to go to the National Park to run around in a clear, smooth venue. After independence, some of the stands will be moved to make room for those recreational facilities. The stands, which have been specially constructed, will further be transported to selected community centre grounds as a means of improving the facilities there as well. Persons traversing the East Bank Demerara Highway will no doubt notice the new addition of an arch erected on the public road in the community of Agricola. The monument was erected in honour of the Golden Jubilee and marks the southern entrance to and departure from the city of Georgetown. The initiative was a collaborative effort among several key stakeholders, including the Mayor and City Council, Banks DIH Limited and other government entities. An unveiling ceremony for the arch will be held on Friday, May 20.
Senior project engineer Mr. Kester Hines explained that working on this project has instilled a sense of pride in the workers, adding that it is an honor to be part of such a historic contribution to Guyana's 50th independence. Yeah, well, as it regards to, to the, pro the, the project on the ground here, the workers are they're very enthusiastic. You know, a lot of times you find when forces are involved in initiatives that are somewhat new to them, they tend to be very enthusiastic in getting it done. So the workers on the ground, they were here, actually most days I think they get off here after six in getting the, the, the base prepared, um, even in getting the area clean because many persons who were familiar with this area, um, the land just next door was filled with trees and bushes but it's an empty land so all of that was cleared. So the satisfaction that it brings to everyone who is involved is great. Um, in my case, you know, when I can look back at it, when I get to the age of just about uh, 100 plus, um, you know, I can bring my grandkids here and say, you, you know, show them that your, you know, your grandfather was involved in, in this project. So it brought some sense of satisfaction for me being involved in such a critical initiative. Within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, Mr. Hines is also responsible for traffic and other safety-related features on the roadways. He stated that the Ministry has amped up its efforts in ensuring that several critical roadways are equipped with the relevant markings and lights around the city. We would have looked at many areas where there, the signs, signs are, are not there, the void of signs. So we would have looked at those areas and ensure that we install signs in those areas. Um, road markings particularly, um, because of course people need to be guided and informed on the proper use of the roads and those markings that are present would be able to distinguish which lane you should drive in, where you should turn and so on. So we, we have done a lot of that over the, the recent weeks. And it seems as though the works have been paying off because the public has taken notice of the improvements that have been occurring. I'm, I'm personally impressed. Prior, prior to um, previously, as soon as rainfall, you find the entire city underwater. But you see a drastic change now, which I want to compliment the authorities. They, despite some criticism, I think they ought to be com, com, um, commended for good job they're doing. In terms of the city, it's very clean. And I think that's the way it ought to have been before. And I hope they keep up the good work. The, all the streets are very clean and they, they paint in the roads and they, and they are rectifying those roads what is bad. They are repairing them. I don't have no comment about the, the way the government is handling things. I, I like the way they're handling all, all the issues. And they're taking it into place because we're getting some foreigners coming in. I think we might get over 5,000 visitors or more. Who knows? And, you know, it will give them an opportunity to come back because most of them have not come here for years. Most Guyanese. And when they come now, they'll see the change. The change is good. Yes, you see the water is traveling now down the pavement. It never used to stay one place all the time. But now the water is moving because they already cleared the way. Jato is not got, getting to be the garden city indeed. I feel great. I born and grow in Georgetown. I the town man, not a country man. Guyanese visiting for the 50th Independence also noticed the difference in the surroundings and infrastructure and expressed their satisfaction. I have traveled back and forth. I've even lived here for over a year in the early 2000s. So, yeah, there's a lot of changes I've seen. Uh, a little more can be done, but as it's now starting, I give... I guess props to whoever is doing the work. Uh, President Granger, keep it up. I know it's a difficult task, but um, as long as you have a good support network, which I'm support you, sure that you do, uh, that's it. There's so many wonderful buildings that's been structures that have been put up in this country. It's marvelous. It's real wonderful, darling. You know, I live in here all my life. When I come back here, if I didn't know this place, I would have been lost how everything gets so come together, you know, and everything looks so pretty and so nice, you know. And we're not reached there yet. We're still getting there. We ain't reached yet, you know. And I'm glad what the people of Ghana is doing. I'm very, very glad. I'm proud of the people in my country, and I do hope they hold the faith. Don't worry. Don't look over the shoulder. Just look straight forward. Among all the restorative work, there has been controversy surrounding the relocation of vendors who ply their trade at the Stabrook Market Square. 
but it is hard to argue that the move contributes to a cleaner, more aesthetically pleasing Starbrook market. The vendors have been relocated to a temporary location opposite the Linden Bus Park and have since been registered and provided with stall numbers. The mayor and city council in April announced the move to temporarily relocate the vendors from in front of the market as part of their move to clean up all public squares in the city. The Stabrook area was given its name by the Dutch and served as a marketplace even before the then Georgetown Town Council designated it an official market in 1842. Construction of the iron and steel structure we see today was completed in 1881. The market area has over the years become crowded with the placement of stalls that overflow into streets which contribute to traffic congestion. Mayor of Georgetown, Mrs. Patricia Chase Green, explained that the move was a necessary one so as to reclaim the historic significance of the area. Because Stabrook Market and Demico House, it has its history and it goes way back to when the slaves were brought off from the ship somewhere and it's being sold in that particular area. So we wanted to have it as a special area, a public park where everyone must be able to enjoy it and not just a few because of their own personal gain to be vending and doing this out of sight. I think they've become accustomed to where they were for so long. And I've said to them, vending is not illegal. What we are trying to do is remove all those obstructions that you have on the city streets. You couldn't enter Georgetown, this nice, bright, beautiful city, and have persons living on our pavement, sane persons, vending and living on our pavement. So we found many, many incidents of that. We try to remove that. Meanwhile, though empathy has been expressed for the vendors as regards their livelihood, some persons also value the long-term benefits of the move. We are like the move of the town council because the people are there when they are selling, their, the place are nasty, and when they go into a market, they have to keep it clean. And the government has been doing this because we wanted to see better tourism in this country. Guyana must be the number one Caribbean for tourism because we have the Kaichou Falls. And if we, we want to get tourism going through the Minister of Tourism, Cathy Huge, we got to do the right thing in this country to see our dollar of our country rise up. Speaking about cleanliness, it is good that at least they remove some of the vendors, but they ought to remove all the vendors because the most spot you give them is the most spot they want. And when they go into the spot, they rent it and they sell it and they come back on the road because they believe, the vendors believe that the road, they will make money, but I don't believe that. This country needs a clean environment. It needs a clean place. It needs a place where people could walk on, on the pavement and not on the road. And I think that the government is doing a very fine job and I must appreciate that and I must thank them for doing that. Apart from the Stabrook Market, Mayor Chase Green said that there are many more plans in store to clean up Georgetown, and that includes restoring historical sites such as the Kitty Market, City Hall, and other projects. We want to bring Georgetown back to its former glory and beyond. We're talking about a modern city. We're also be looking at parking meters we would like to introduce, at least before the year is finished, to broaden our revenue base. I know we're going to get some negativity, but we have to move forward. And so there are just a few of the things we're presently going to undertake for this year. Because we don't want to take on too much and we can't complete it. So for this year, we would like to maintain our drainages so there'll be no flooding. And I'm quite certain lots of people have been enjoying that. And we're getting lots of kudos from the business people because they have not had losses. Um, so we like to have, we'll have to maintain that. Our cemeteries, we want to maintain border and the Laurent here also. That's a garbage collection. We would like to increase our garbage collection, but that's also based on our revenue base. So all in all, Georgetown is on the move. We have a new council who are very, those persons are very enthusiastic, and so they're moving forward. Mayor Chase Green is aware that there is much work to be done, but is optimistic that coupled with the Council's hard work, a change in attitudes towards keeping the environment clean in an aim of maintaining national pride will serve well for the city of Georgetown. Minister Patterson has also pledged the support of his ministry to assist the Council with rehabilitative works.
Even with these restorative works in progress, there is much more work to be done if Georgetown is to become the modern capital we aspire it to be. Moreover, it will take the work of all Guyanese to achieve this goal. This is Jasmine Payne. Thank you for joining us.